groups. Uh, we've got the agenda before us. The first item is opening, welcome, and the purpose of the meeting. You're warmly welcome into this meeting. Uh, the purpose of the meeting is to get a briefing on item three. So I would not waste time because we have got a busy schedule in parliament. I will allow the, the official to render apologies before us. The meeting is officially open. Over to you, Brakin. Thank you, Chairperson. Good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, uh, honorable members. Uh, good morning, uh, uh, official from the department. Chairperson, uh, in the road, in the when we're doing the road call, we've got Inkosi, Ultuli, we've got uh, Honorable Matulelwa, Honorable Kroka, Honorable April. Honorable Mabiga, Honorable Mieni, Honorable Zungula, and uh, Honorable uh, Tifilias. Those are the members who are, who are already in the platform. On the side of the department chairperson, we've got a uh, chief of staff, Kabatia, Mr. Kabinde, uh, Mr. Stole, Mr. Mzizane, no Ms. Tawegazi uh, Kasamba. And then on the apologies chair, we have received the apologies from the department, uh, the minister, the calling an apology of the minister who is out of the country. We've got also the apology of the deputy minister. And then we are also having an apology of the DG, Mr. Mkumani who is uh, requested to make a presentation in the cabinet. So due to of, of acting Minister Mtswadeli, he requested him to be part to do that presentation. So I believe that uh, the leader of the department, it's the chief of staff who is uh, Ms. Prabhatia. So right now, uh, Honorable Lubengo has joined and the Honorable uh, Hendricks has joined. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Bracken. Apologies noted. The department will inform us who will be leading them, who will present, who will make the presentation before us. Um, Honorable members, can I have a mover for the adoption of the agenda? Chairperson, I move for the adoption of the agenda. Thank you. Any second, honorable members? Chairperson, I second. Thank you, honorable April. Can we move to the next item, which is presentation by the department? Mr. Kabinda, you will uh, inform us who is going to lead you in the absence of the DG. Over to you. Uh, greetings to the chairperson and uh, to the honorable members. Um, uh, my understanding is that the presentation is with the, uh, is, uh, was shared with the secretariat. I don't know whether Mr. Gnene, if I can uh, maybe try and uh, uh, share because it says uh, I'm disabled or you are to scroll that presentation that was shared. Can I make you a co-host and scroll it and, and uh, present it on your site? Okay, please. Okay, I've made you a co-host. Okay, let me try. Uh, Is there something visible there? Yes, it is visible. And 
will request okay. that will request that you show yourself so that members can see who is making a presentation since they have never been in the in the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Jesse. <laughs> and the colleagues' uh, greetings. <laughs> um, thank you, Chair. Um, and to the colleagues, um, my name is Vugil Gabinda from the Department of Small Business Development. Um, I'm currently the director responsible for cooperatives business support as per the new structure that was approved last year. <clears throat> I assumed this responsibility from um, first of April. However, one has been with the department since that uh, migration from the TTI, my first entry was on this uh, development of the strategy for, which is called National Informal Business Upliftment Strategy, Neighbors. Um, as you know, as a department, uh, that uh, body of work of the informal and microeconomy is very key. And then let me say I was uh, maybe formalized, I graduated or something like that to then be responsible for this last approved strategy called the National Integrated Small Enterprise Development Strategy that is NISET, uh, that has just also been gazetted uh, as uh, our strategy for the next 10 years. And then uh, now uh, one, um, as you might be aware, uh, honorable members also that the current strategy that we call it current, uh, that is guiding the body of work of cooperatives um is was from 2012 to 2022 in essence uh key to our body of work this year is uh, just a review preparation that a new strategy really also needs to be developed for cooperatives so we are also then in a way working with our eu partners uh, uh, looking into say what are these key things that we did not almost gap analysis of some kind so that when we move to the next uh, uh, phase, we'll be able to, 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 to really be responsive uh, uh, as it were. Uh, I got also the opportunity to uh, be exposed to the last uh, PC uh, on cooperatives where mm -hmm. Mr. Markey who was the last coordinator of this body of work was presenting in terms of uh, uh, transitioning of uh, the body of work, especially uh, from CIFA to CEDA and issues relating to uh, the cooperatives movement, which we are currently moving. I'm trying to scroll the screen, uh, my uh, dear brother, uh, Mr. Gnene, uh, but I'm not able to page down. I'm not sure whether uh, there's something I'm trying to press down and uh, it's not moving, or is it moving maybe from your side, Chairperson? Um, um, it's just on that screen that it was. Maybe let me try to reshare again. Yeah, it's moving. Okay, there we go, yeah. All right, just these uh, five uh, quadrants around the background, and then the mandate, I think, will move faster because we really know who we are as a department, and then we'll dwell much because the brief received was that um, um, we ought to share with the uh, 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 members, honorable members, the MOU between the TSBD and TGRV. So in essence, one, we just took the uh, uh, the MAU as it were, somewhere tried to summarize, but just packed it as it were so that we uh, uh, go through it together and where we can move first, of course we can, but just certain areas we might want to emphasize. And then really just in on number four, the quick state of affairs from that um, MOU as it was signed because it was uh, signed last year um what progress really in essence and number five really 
some uh, other propositions basically uh, moving forward. Um, of course, this really uh, relates to the uh, background of the department. Also, I won't uh, uh, spend much, but call on the latter part of this where our work is driven by the cooperative policy, of course, of 2005. The Cooperatives Act uh, as amended, also in fact, 2004, the policy, the Cooperative Act was 2005, then amended in 2013, and the Cooperative Strategy, which was that of 2012 to 2022. As we know, colleagues, that uh, this then body of work by the then DTI transferred to the, uh, to the Department of uh, Small Business Development. So we look forward then that we are presenting this uh, presentation to your good selves in terms of our relationship as wow. a department and the uh, DGRV. Yeah. Again, kindly allow me to move. Uh, and of course, as we know, and uh, of course the PC had uh, a welcome, but that uh, we have our deputy minister, uh, Elizabeth de Peters, whom according to the delegations also that uh, have been given. She is also a, a, the lead person for the cooperatives work. Of course, we are aware about our agencies, uh, how we are uh, organized as a department. Allow me to 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 move uh, 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 quicker on that one to get into this core of the MOU between these two institutions. First, it will be very interesting. It was a very interesting to one. I recall we had a, 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 a workshop, let me call it a meeting with uh, these organizations. Let me say, claiming currently to be representing uh, cooperatives, you are NASA, you are NAXA, you are SANACO, and we had DGRV there. In my understanding, uh, at a time before that meeting was that DGRV is a German um, government agency. Yet uh, during the deliberations by those uh, uh, cooperative organizations, you know, on TGRV, when they were punting it as well to say, you are an apex body in German of cooperatives. In fact, you are more relevant uh, to be working with us as cooperative movement. And then ensure that the department, in terms of the German cooperative uh, relations, cooperation, but that's where the strength of government to government also gets in. It was very interesting that uh, as a learning outcome from that workshop, I thought this was a government agency, but it's an independent, uh, uh, call it cooperative organization. About this uh, MOU <clears throat> in 2022, in August, that's when it was signed off, uh, as it says that uh, the start of an MOU is when the last signature or it would be done, it was done in August. And then, while well, I won't dwell much, but the preamble really, there are various sections of this uh, document. It starts with section one, which is a preamble of the MOU. As we know, colleagues, that uh, in fact, key even on the foundation of our department was with the uh, articulation of the NTP pegging our economic growth, uh, job creation uh, through small enterprises. So this relationship also is based within that uh, context and uh, to advance also uh, inclusive growth. And at the time, number B, uh, it was the Integrated Cooperatives Development Branch. Now in the new structure, we are referred to as um, uh, Cooperatives and Micro Enterprise Development. Um, so that's where this body of work, the relationship, the management of this uh, MOU. So core to the department, of course, is the component of forging partnerships uh, with the private sector, with um, various organizations in the development of sustainable cooperatives through really upskilling them, development of their capacities, HR-wise, for them to be understanding uh, cooperative principles, you know, through really uh, advancing various technical uh, interventions, management and education. As we'll see later, that already as part of the uh, developments that we have acted upon. 
some assessment works uh, done in various provinces and just this very financial year, uh, the uh, cooperative uh, governance training that we've uh, were done to about 30 cooperatives in KZN through this partnership, uh, uh, through this partnership as well. So we are really looking forward and we look forward to this partnership. Well, DGRs, the component of that, their mission in the SADC in general and in South Africa in particular, they say they seek to use their over 200 years of cooperative uh, uh, tradition and experience to contribute towards supporting and increasing the number of cooperatively organized groups uh, that are actively participating in economic activity, income generation, job creation, poverty alleviation, through working with recognized representative organizations. That is very, very crucial uh, to us as well, and uh, the government and other stakeholders. So these parties, they acknowledge that, of course, their distinct and complementing roles, they hereby confirm a common commitment to jointly embark on supporting and facilitating the development from pre-formation to fully sustainable cooperatives at uh, local level. And the party further commit themselves really to provide such support and facilitation within the current legal framework for the development of viable, autonomous, self-reliant, self-sustaining corps, able to grasp opportunities presented by various government programs, but not limited to some that are stated here like procurement, community works and so on. So it can uh, uh, go wide as it can. So. Therefore, the parties wish to regulate this relationship as a spouse above by concluding this MOU, that is at a time, with the intention of providing in writing the terms and conditions of their collaboration. The parties understand that this MOU does not create any obligations on either party and that the overall intent is to collaborate and work together on areas identified in the MOU it is further understood that the specific programs and projects to be implemented under this MOU will be determined and agreed to jointly by the parties on a case-by-case -case basis. And in the event the parties embark on a project, it will be on a basis of a specific work or program implementation plan or a, a, a service level agreement where it needs to be. So that's the preamble area on section one. Of course, section two is just abbreviations and definitions that are there. I, uh, 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 please uh, allow me that that one we can refer to the document that is uh, then given. Um, section three, um, um, relates to the aim of this uh, memorandum. Um, which really I'll quickly also go through like I did with the other one, to really to ensure responsive local government. And it's very interesting, the local government uh, element, because it's permeating a lot, as we'll see on this document. Uh, responsive local government that is effective, efficient, and economically able to promote local economic development through coordinated facilitation and delivery of capacity building, technical and institutional support to municipalities, uh, working with cooperatives, government development agencies, and sector departments to achieve an outcome-driven local economic development that empowers all rural players to actively contribute inclusive local economic development and sustainable communities that are socially cohesive and united, that are capable of taking active role in the improvement of their social economic status are less dependent on social grant support. Very interesting point here. I, I, I'm even already even, uh, I don't want to say foresee, but that relationship with the Department of Social Development, the acceleration from, I don't to, let's say from grant to sustainable uh, economic activities, have access to affordable financial services from their own cooperatives, banks. Very interesting point, this one, given also the relationship with the CBDA, that is uh, key in terms of the financial services sector, 
home ownership of the have ownership of the means of production for their consumption and market infrastructure issues embrace self employment and job creation are able to eradicate poverty and hunger are able to make contribution to payment for municipal services and protect community infrastructure from uh, vandalism and act of course as mentioned the even earlier uh, the guide collaboration between the two parties is uh, through of this MOU is within the framework of our constitution, the NTP, the Cooperatives Act, and the Banks Act as well. Then section four really talks to the objectives and scope of the memorandum that the parties agree that the primary aim of this MOU is to facilitate job creation through supporting and capacitating communities, officials, and groups for development of viable and sustainable cooperatives within their space. The principles which underpin the parties, activities and operating as contemplated, sorry, 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 uh, as contemplated um, in this memorandum are to formalize the relationship and desired strategic partnership amongst DSBD and DGRV and their respective responsibilities regarding the support and capacitation of municipalities to develop cooperatives through capacity building, promotion, and other support measures practically feasible to ensure growth and sustainability of cooperatives um, to, uh, let me see. through capacity building technical and institutional support measures. Collaborate with other partners to support the existing cooperatives uh, that have scope for growth and growing local economies uh, through capacity building, technical and institutional support. Monitor jobs created through cooperatives while contributing to the growth of the local economy. Support municipalities in the development of cooperatives through capacity building, technical and institutional support facilitate cooperative access to training, technical support, financial support and so forth from any private, public or not for profit organizations working with the parties in a joint or separate agreement. Then uh, 4.3 of that, it looks at the key results areas uh, for implementation that will be measured and success evaluated periodically and reviewed annually in terms of these KRAs and the activities being there, um, there on this table, so which defines the scope in essence. So KRA1 looks into the implementation of the Cooperative Development Support Program. It relates also that what activities really then can be there to advance this one, that there has to be workshops, Workshop LET officials and departments working with cooperatives on implementing CDSP. In fact, um, the evolution from the cooperative incentive scheme, the current program is called the Cooperative Development Support Program, so that therefore capacitating um, even uh, LET officials because they get also exposed uh, to cooperatives in their body of work jointly identify qualifying pipeline and cooperative based projects to be supported to benefit and repay the credit portion of this facility. Because as it stands, the facility will recall, it's a 7030 scheme. Of course, in this uh, new envisaged transition from CIDA, from CIFA to CIDA, there might be some other uh, consideration on that uh, uh, framework. Uh, provide business and technical training to cooperatives in the various sectors of the economy, especially those that have been identified as the potential pipeline, so that when we do, let's say, awareness campaigns about the program, we find that there are informal groupings that are there, which might need support. There might be cooperatives already existing, not aware of the scheme, therefore be able to, to expand and then those that also get to clustering, maybe even at secondary level, could be supported further. Monitor and compile an impact assessment report 
on percentage of cooperatives that are growing program participants on that program, developing network of trainers, mentors, and coaches for cooperatives with skills in the cooperative bookkeeping, financial management, auditing, governance. Governance very, very crucial as well, given what we would hear about the infightings and so on. Marketing, customer services, and HR management. And then KRA2, building of cooperatives, knowledge-based, and adoption by role players. I think being able really to have uh, not only repositories, but other countries were told maybe part of this very engagement is also about that. What kind of uh, knowledge development within this enterprise approach of people collectively uh, 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 cooperating together for economic activities. What kind of institutional knowledge development, be it colleges, be it universities or so on. But then here they are saying also setting up of reference groups within identified district to guide, implement and monitor cooperative community economic development models. Uh, implement community cooperative economic participation pilot projects undertaken in each municipality under the district development model. Number of operational cooperative members trained as facilitators, assessors, moderators of cooperatives training nationally towards building that capacity. That's the second KRA, the third one around financial and economic inclusivity on township and economic and rural economic, village economic vibrancy. Here we're saying facilitate and support establishment of cooperative financial institutions within the identified districts. Also certain countries will find that those local based banks that are there in the locality in the districts, you know, financial literacy, consciousness building, the CBDA kind of a component to say, how to really do we uh, a, a, a build strong relations? In fact, at the CBDA discussions, we also learned one of the, not in Cape, I think it's Orania, one of the very good uh, uh, cooperative development banks there for modeling also that we can reflect on, facilitate and support establishment of cooperatives for community works program, participants in identified municipalities. So here I will take very, our relationship with COCTA, with DPWI, very, very key to advance uh, uh, those. And then increase the percentage of viable and sustainable cooperatives that uh, would have benefited from this uh, uh, relationship. Uh, that was four, and therefore, Section five, one, and two, it therefore um, relates on our relationship between the two institutions, DGRV one, subject to mutually agreed project concept. DGRV intends to support implementation thereof through measures, but not limited to the following, joint development of program implementation or plan with DSBD, participation in the steering committee implementation meetings, Assist in the preparation of the necessary workshop documentations, material, and post training reports, facilitation and provision of training for officials, leaders, and cooperatives in line with approved cooperative economic development plans, consolidation of provincial monitoring and impact evaluation reports, coordination with DSBD or relevant government agents for logistics such as venues, travel, <clears throat> and accommodation uh, for experts where applicable funds permitting cover the costs of material printing, travel for at least two facilitators to and from the training venue. This number six and seven, as we'll see on the status, uh, is a practical scenario that I've uh, experienced uh, with them where uh, on the training that we did in KZN, the two facilitators, the manuals that uh, uh, are there, and uh, one of our action also is about how do we update also that manual to be reflected of certain developments that are there, especially legal-wise. 
Number eight, provision of services of technical and non-technical nature at the cost of DGRV or shared cost basis where applicable. Provision of the trained the trainer and mentoring of, of cooperative representative and support organization, as well as department staff or people seconded for this purpose by this uh, GSBD, and as we look forward at in strengthening this relation. Assisting with inputs to newsletters, articles, and cooperatives performance and status quo uh, annual reports. And together with the SBD, facilitate reformation workshops with municipalities, identified groups, and so on. And then 5.2 looks to us as a department um, responsible for the functions listed below. Uh, number one, to assist identified districts or municipalities with the development of the operational or implementation work plan coordinate, organize, participate, and chair the MOU steering committee and implementation monitoring meetings, to mobilize and facilitate convergence of relevant stakeholders to a central convenient venue, to coordinate training workshops in consultation with DGR in line with the approved plan, to ensure the provision for logistics for training venues, and accommodation expenses for a maximum of two facilitators uh, involved in each uh, intervention done through this MOU, like the one, the support we gave with the last training. All shared cost basis were applicable to ensure preparation, printing, packaging of necessary workshop material to facilitate data collection through municipalities and coordinate the preparation of annual uh, cooperative performance to facilitate the development um, and distribution of cooperative newsletter once a quarter uh, together with the provincial government, DSBD will facilitate acquisition of information at local government level with the cooperation of municipalities to identify eligible beneficiaries of the programs and DSBD will facilitate other forms of support for cooperatives through partnerships with other government departments and uh, stakeholders. And therefore, number six then talks to the duration of this uh, memorandum, 6.1, that shall be for a period of up to 2024, literally meaning from that uh, 2022, in essence, is almost uh, like two years, five or so months. And the number two, the designated representatives or their nominees shall meet at the commencement of each quarter of every year or by notice from each party to another to discuss uh, um, this, the implementation of this MOU. The parties agree that there shall be no expectation of the future renewal of this agreement, any decision uh, to renew shall be subject to the agreement by the parties and reduced to writing by means of an addendum. And then it takes us to section seven, the cooperation. Well, these are some colleagues, at least from this section downwards, are those um, legal kind of uh, areas that are standard in MOU that they agree to cooperate in good faith, number seven. Then number eight relates then to the dispute resolution measures. And uh, I would kindly ask the house to allow me really that can be taken note of and be interacted with because uh, um, as I say, it's part of this uh, um, standard uh, clauses in an agreement, including number nine, that we are committing in this uh, together. It's the whole agreement that we are at. And on number 10, around the financial implications, really that there is no direct commitment. It does not constitute financial obligations on either party, but it provides an overall intent to collaborate and work together on those areas identified 
um, above the on clause four of this MOU. And I think here um, we might be found wanting, though we're interacting, the steering committee uh, shall uh, jointly set up a steer com to manage and implement this MOU uh, efficiently and effectively. And then section 12 um, and 13 really, in fact, I think one is repeated there, but it addresses for um, communication and the other one for uh, service of notices and correspondence, issues of breach and termination, attestation, that's where now the signatures come in. I think section 15 is the last uh, part of this uh, MOU chairperson. Um, moving then to the next uh, component on the state of this MOU, I can really, really um, uh, say the update from the previous financial year, which also, as we know um, now, that we are still to be one year effectively on this um, uh, agreement. However, in the last financial year, there were two workshops that uh, uh, with DGRB were convened with CIDA and CIFA. Um, in the first of the two workshops, it was held in the Popo um, in September 8 and 9, where um, the DGRB shared the type of support that they are providing to cooperatives as part really of uh, uh, sharing this relationship that we have towards those sustainable uh, one. And then one of the approach also that is being taken is a needs assessment so that even when we intervene, we are able to find out when we do awareness campaigns um, about, let's say, a problem, what are the needs of these organizations? However, part we've also identified there are certain ones which are would be non-negotiable, like a governance training on cooperatives, so that um, every cooperative will support has to ensure that it understands the legal implications, the principles, and all of those that will ensure that they are indeed a sustainable uh, a cooperative. Um, then depending on the outcomes we have set, then the corporate the, the interventions therefore will follow. And then in this financial year, starting from um, uh, April, as mentioned, um, the planning that started in 2022 between TGRV and DSVD um, took us to this um, ultimate uh, first major uh, induction and exposure to us as a new team that has been assembled here to uh, run the cooperatives unit. Um, <clears throat> being on the field, there was very, very much eye-opening because you get to hear uh, directly um, or because it creates that evidence, you know, uh, the interventions that you seek to do, are they really resonating with the uh, issues on the ground? So the 30 cooperatives that were there, um, it was in a form of two sets of uh, two-day trainings on cooperative governance, you know, as I was articulating the principles, um, understanding really their constitution, the role of the leaders there, um, you know, if you are a treasurer, what is your role there, and so on. Very, very crucial from the governance perspective that every single enterprise that will support it has to have undergone that, including the bookkeeping element for us is very crucial. <clears throat> and then on put on pull it to and it's very uh, two months, but that first month of April really was core for us, um, especially is that uh, a new team to engage first. You know, we asked the team members present on the cooperative policy, another on the cooperative act, another one on the cooperative strategy. Another one on the report of those, the cooperatives that were researched were supported before, so that really we are on the same wavelength and really see whatever we seek them to do um, uh, 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 could take us somewhere. In that very workshop, therefore, our stakeholders, including TGRV, CIDA, CIFA, and those cooperative organizations, we uh, uh, interacted. So the portion with TGRV, 
yield at these following actions that um, we need to have a, a further meeting to discuss uh, the MOU, um, which uh, includes the, as you can see, when it's articulated there, is not just about the training and so on. There are so much things that are embedded there and uh, from the capacity, the management of this thing and look into what is practically feasible um, within the resources that are within our locus of control together and then see how we then move and interface for instance, especially with other initiatives like those of CEDA, CEDA-LED, the district ecosystem facilitation model to advance DDM. Because if we as a department have got these district champions, um, like I'm a district champion for in the Northern Cape, John Taul Khaizi with JTG, our role also there with CEDA and CIFA and the LED municipality, how therefore do we then advance that cooperative uh, agenda as a spouse in this MOU, very, very crucial. So this um, meeting of the 25th, therefore, articulated that we need then the, the, the fully fledged session to unpack the MOU, and that is still to happen. Um, and therefore, as a department, we need to develop a training schedule, uh, which will include what number of participants, topics, and so on. And I can tell you safely also that in this past two weeks, uh, two months, and especially as we're developing our operational plan, we are at that uh, final stage of uh, finalizing that uh, uh, training schedule. The dates and provinces have already been articulated, which is for uh, linking up. For instance, we are also having an MOU with the CIPC, as we know, while we are the custodians of the eggs, the entry part, the registry is still within CIPC. So that cooperatives unit gets to be our uh, relationship party. So that as we go to awareness campaigns, as we go to trainings, they will also be able to be plugged in because when you talk governance as well, there are legal compliance issues that um, uh, these uh, organizations must to be. Uh, exposed to. So uh, we have agreed as articulated there on the agreement, how we relate and uh, um, giving the lead time of two weeks for logistics and so on. So uh, as we finalize our MOU um, uh, action items, these are specific things that already has happened with the KZN1. I know we are uh, planning another one in the um, in Pumalanga, now in end of June, uh, that also will take us to say, if our APP talks also about finance and non-financial support, awareness alone is not enough to say we have uh, supported with non-financial support, but at least if there is a, a further educational element, whether it's through CIPC or SARS or so, that therefore uh, increase the scope of the awareness really to a, a non-financial support kind of an activity. So the request also from DSBD to have a session with DGRV and the facilitators, meaning facilitators of the training, that governance training, to update the manual either over Teams or in person. So we are to provide this. The first exposure that we did with the KZN facilitators was to engage with them and ask that can they please from there, because even themselves, they were also making some inputs on the flow on the manual and so on. And from our side, uh, which will also bring in CIPC in this review so that the content that is there as we're saying, some of the eggs, they are still referring to the older egg. So now we have to put the, the, the updated egg. So this is part of the work uh, in motion that is there. Um, there was a needs analysis, as we said, in that's Kukune, but they've already sent that uh, feedback in terms of the needs analysis. That will be also another uh, next intervention area because of this evidence that is telling us as well to say uh, what else can we uh, intervene that side. There was not in this um, 
financially or the last financial year, but the interface or the relationship with between TGRV also and the department was also seemingly there before even this um, MOU somehow. And there were some projects that were supported jointly in the Western Cape, a pilot bakery project. And seemingly this did not um, a, a, a proceed well or the project really, as they say here, collapsed. So TGRV will give us a status an assessment around that, they will give us then that feedback. And hence, we're really, really looking forward uh, to this combined efforts of the two, because training for now, um, let's use these words, uh, low hanging fruits. And therefore, as we plan, as we say, on our workshop regarding the unpacking of this MOU, that local government component then gets to be very, very key. And my is an understanding I have that uh, we have also an MOU with COCTA, which at the national summit last year, uh, COCTA, when it came to intergovernmental relations, raised uh, stakeholder forum, they raised that issue that we need to give life to that relationship. Then to the last slide, Chairperson, um, it is also highly recommended uh, uh, that the DSBD uh, officials that are working with cooperatives as well be exposed to this, to that, let's call it the German cooperative model, taking positive advantage of this MOU, this relationship. Um, you know, we can have where this exchange or so, so that um, um, institutional capacity through this German cooperation can also take us to the uh, 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 next level. And then um, there is this, that itself, as in my opening remarks, that DGRV is not a government agency, but an apex body. Um, it is really further recommended that uh, DSBD and DGRV cooperate towards the support of the development of an apex body here in the country. Of course, uh, an apex body also has to organically happen. It's not something that to force. It's something that is articulated also in the act on how um, you know you are tertiary cooperatives and geographical component. Therefore, so while we have these organizations, um, let me say that say they are representing. Um, uh, uh, cooperatives and so on. There are certain, of course, um, statutes of some kind. Hence, we are working on something called a strategic relations uh, framework on cooperatives because anybody, three tycoon guys who can be able to articulate themselves can say we represent cooperatives. You ask them, where is your database? They will tell you the computer crash last week, they'll come, they'll come, and ultimately not come. So the evolution, so that exposure as well to that chairman cooperative model, including the MSDGRV, uh, how really have they organized and mobilized the, let's call it the cooperative movement to ultimately uh, yield this, what is referred to as an apex body, will be uh, uh, appreciated. And I think uh, one, while there are many other things of actions uh, still to be recommended, but uh, the one main assessment also that we have is that uh, the steering committee uh, needs to really be, let's call it, be rekindled. Because for now, it's um, this is the representative of the of TGRV, and from our side, let's say myself, then we just talk actions, but from a systematic point of view and certain articulations that are put here, like uh, meeting periodically, like quarterly and so on, I think we need them to put more effort through this DECOM, which gets to be highlighted here as a one major action that can sort some out some of the other therefore actions that therefore were not articulated um, uh, uh, here. So, we are really recommending the PC to note the contents of this MOU with um, a TGRV 
and uh, we really welcome any inputs and comments uh, uh, towards strengthening this relationship. I thank you for giving me your ear. Thank you, Chairperson, and honorable members and colleagues. Uh, thank you, thank you. That was powerful. Honorable members, here's the presentation, the yes. Memorandum of Understanding between our department and the Germany cooperatives. Can I have some inputs because already they have got some recommendations in the conclusion which uh, really uh, will strengthen us uh, as department. That's why we want to go there, but going there without peers with, with this country won't assist us into the present as well as the recommendation. Brakin will assist me to identify hands in this regard. Mr. Are there any hands? Mr. Kabinde, can you stop sharing? Yes, Chair, so far there's one from Krug, Mr. Kruger. Okay. The only one. So far, Chair. Honorable Kruger, the stage is yours. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning to all the colleagues in this very cold Cape Town. Um, and thank you for, for, for the presentation. And uh, although um, the strategy since 2014 was to get MEOs, M, what, what it is, this, um, agreements with all departments, it seems like the department is very slow signing these agreements, but I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to see that at least there is a, a agreement in place. But Jay, that is not the question. My question is, you know, um, since the early 2000s and when cooperatives were still with uh, DTI, um, the failure rate was very high. Um, if I if I recall correctly, it's between seventy five percent and eighty percent of cooperatives that received funding from government um, failed in their first year. So my question is, with this strategy now in place, um, what is the the failure rate um, now? You know, and and with all the training taking place in KwaZulu-Natal, and, and, and I presume that, um, that or, or I think that um, our previous chairperson is very involved in that training because cooperatives is one of the pas our pas passions in life. So I just want to find out uh, what is the experience now of the failure rate of cooperatives? Um, are, are we... Are we going forward or are communities just use the grants from, from government, um, you know, not to start a business, but rather just to add to the, um, you know, just to stay alive. So um, if, you, if you can just give us some indication about the success rate of, of the strategy. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Honorable Kruger. Any other member? The Chair, it's Honorable uh, Matulela. Mm. Honorable Matulela, over to you. Honorable Matulelo. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, greetings to yourself and honorable members um, and uh, uh, secretariat, everyone. Um, my question is very short, but I think it's very, it's going to be um, a very important question. Uh, there are many 
like a cooperatives chairperson across the country that were created through uh, the, the advice from the department to say, uh, in order to, to, to access funds, you must at least be in a group, in groups or create your cooperative. Uh, but uh, in terms of funding now, it's very, very, very difficult for the cooperatives to get funds. I've had this presentation, but my concern is, um, is there any mechanism or is there any plan to go as as they, they as we are given this uh, presentation? Is there any plan to go and capacitate uh, our cooperatives and revive them? Remember, I said on Matatiel, Oto Gabigo Matlia. You go to Evembe uh, Limpopo. You go to Guazulu uh, Natal, go Spingo, go Mlazi. Remember, you remember there was even a case where they, we were told that CIFA disappeared. The, the CIDA, I mean, CIDA office. So, in these areas that I'm, few areas that I'm counting of many in, in across the country, the country small businesses, in particular the, the, the cooperatives, there is no relevant office that is, is there stationed to, to assist the common prayer, to assist our cooperatives, more especially to get funds and to, to, to develop them as our obligation is to develop small businesses as well. So I just want to know, is there a plan to go there physically go there and revive the spirits of these cooperatives. Remember, there was a budget also that go back, that, that has gone back in our last financial year where we were told that red tape is the reason why uh, cooperatives were not funded at all uh, because of the, 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 the sum of the red tape issues uh, in terms of cooperatives. So is there any plan that they are ready to go, in particular in these townships and rural uh, areas, to go and uh, revive the spirit of the current cooperatives and also capacitate uh, these ones that are, are operating on their own without any funds from government. If there is no any other uh, plan, uh, what, uh, 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 what are they going to, to, to make sure, what are they going to do to make sure that our cooperatives, they access funds and we have a, a balance on what is happening as they are presenting in all over, more especially in townships and rural areas, uh, Chairperson. So uh, that is uh, what uh, makes me be more concerned is because these cooperatives, some of them, they were created, they were, they were established, but they are no longer uh, operating in a full force as their plan, as their business plan. They operate in their uh, smaller uh, um, resources that they try to, to bring together. And they are dying, the chairperson is a, it's a, it's a, it's a fact that they, they are dying, these, these cooperatives, because of there is, there is a lack of assistance from government. So I just wanted to know that, and the, uh, and the, and the, uh, I wanted to know if is there any plan, a really a constructive plan that is going to be implemented to go to these rural and townships for 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 our cooperatives, Chairperson. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Honourable Matulele. Do you have any other hand, Brakin? No, Chairperson. Thank you all. Now allow the department to respond. But I will appreciate honorable members also to reflect on the recommendation because the, this MOU needs also need our blessing and support. Uh, I heard honorable Kruger saying that they delayed. So I believe we can give a message of saying that let's proceed and speed up the process so that uh, implementation is being done and also support the issue of the apex 
uh, committee, uh, as he has indicated, uh, Apex body, as he, it has been alluded by um, Comrade Kabin. Over to you, Laban Kabin. I'm talking to myself, sorry, Chair. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, and thanks to the honorable members that have asked the questions and I would say even comments somewhere. Uh, in fact, they are more outside of the MOU per se. Uh, however, they are in context, of course, of this body of work. And uh, I will also then take advantage in responding to share, of course, some of the initiatives that we are uh, working on. Um, Baba Kruger, yes, your history with this body of work, I know it tells when you talk the 2000s and so on. Uh, I recall even your comments on the last PE regarding uh, one of our officials who've been with this body of work. Um, uh, and he's still my boss. We'll try really to allay your fears and with your support, really we can um, really achieve. Um, um, yes, hence I said this relationship between DGRV and the department, maybe it was then, maybe one can find out not uh, managed through an MOU, but the relationship was there. There were workshops they would do and pre-formations and so on at some stage, but on this one, it was then signed in the, uh, that is last year and is for the next two years has the issue of us having a clear uh, 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 a program of action with DGRV as articulated uh, there. And coming to the failure rate, I think uh, here a context is very uh, uh, much needed. But first, I think uh, like in the previous year, we had CIS previous years, that is, that cooperative incentive scheme. And there was therefore a follow up to say those cooperatives that we have supported, uh, let's go and hunt them. Let's check them. Um, how are they faring? Are they uh, operational and so on? It was quite interesting instead that this 71, in fact, it was almost 80% of them were operational. Um, uh, it might not be really at the peak at the kind of, uh, you know, very, very good rate, but they were not um, uh, uh, dead, as it were, uh, but more uh, kind of support further needed. The one leg that we saw in our interface with CIPC is the issue on the states that a lot of them are no longer, are not doing annual returns, which that might create a situation as if they are not functioning uh, since they've not done annual returns. Yet when they did that on-site visit, they found them uh, 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 to be operation, to be in, in, in operation. It was quite an interesting revelation. And um, when it comes to the strategy, uh, as I've mentioned, we don't have a strategy. Uh, when you're referring to a strategy, um, currently 2022 to 2020, uh, 2012 to 2022, that was the 10 years tenure of this, of the call it the previous strategy. So one therefore for our action of this financial year is to take stock, review, how did we fare on this on the implementation of the strategy? Because if you look, the strategy has got about four pillars from access to markets, to sustainability, to access to um, uh, uh, capacity of these, uh, or access to finance and so on. So you find that our intervention was almost one instrument, the instrument of CIS then now called CDSP. What about these other uh, 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 components? So issues of institutional arrangements really for cooperatives uh, when we can expect uh, certain deliverables, but the institutional mechanism in terms of capacity internally 
I think it's one thing that uh, we need to strengthen as a department uh, because that time, as we're referring to the DTI time, um, the chief directorate of cooperatives had, for instance, about five directors, which was even outside of uh, the cooperative incentive scheme staff of about 10, 12, 13, to a, 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 a director to it now, the state of affairs of it now, being a directorate, having to encompass all both policy and practice, that is that work which was CIS with those multi-people and uh, this one. So it is internal component that we seek to, to strengthen further as we are reviewing then the strategy. So we are reviewing so that we start then the process of strategic development now for cooperatives. We take then in the next financial year a process which will therefore say how are we remodeling our delivery model in essence uh, to that side. And safe to say the case that anyone, unfortunately, um, the, uh, the former chair was not involved on this one or is not involved. This is part of um, proactive organizations. There are community organizations like there in this area of Uganda called Ngungumate. There is an NPO that is very, very progressive and uh, very, very uh, developmental in that rural area too, on youth development, cooperative support and so on. So those are the ones that uh, extended an invitation to the department last year and we then probed and followed up to uh, uh, on that work. So um, we are envisaging on the strategy review also that sometime it could be in August or late in July, um, the first kind of uh, this, let's call it the draft review paper that would have something like a, a stakeholder dialogue on that review so that we then together have, let's call it a concept document for consultation now with stakeholders towards uh, the development of the, um, let's call it the new cooperative strategy. And then on the, uh, thanks, uh, uh, Honorable Ma, uh, Matulel, uh, your inputs are, 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 are welcome and uh, they are they are they are they are noted um um you know this one of the challenges towards the point by honorable uh, uh, kruger around the failure rate uh, let's call it the failure of some of the cooperatives because they were also um established let me use these words pardon me for wrong reasons you know if people are organized because there is funding. It means whoever asks is the ecosystem, and I wouldn't necessarily say it was the department, let's say the ecosystem, because of course, not only the department, there are provincial departments, even some municipalities. When this, uh, let me use the word fashion was in, eh, from cooperatives and so on. But you know, if you look at the organic cooperatives called stock fails, as an example, in their various subsectors, if those are the kinds of investments or approaches really that we move on and also start to, you know, strengthen to be those banks. I mean, how many millions of uh, these stock fails are in the core mainstream banks that are there, which they can be devolved to be those regional and uh, village banks that were envisaging through cooperatives. So the element of um, uh, having this clue, this thing that brings people together to cooperate beyond being told is funding, that's the key driver. Let me say that's the energy, that's the entrepreneurship really that uh, uh, is needed. However, that being said, of course, if those cooperatives are still there, uh, soggling really, but really functioning. I think we have to support them. We have to look forward to them. And I think we, I would really, really kindly also where you also personally also in your capacity there, know some, please let's extend and share such a kind of um, a, 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 a information so that we can hunt them. Coming to the plan, he, to our um, annual performance plan this year, 
is um, the that 250 cooperatives needs to be supported uh, financially and or non-financially. That's one. So that what we have then done um, as a non-APP activity, we have then established uh, a develop what we call an awareness campaign um, uh, plan of action that we have to be going throughout all these provinces. Of course, uh, working with CIDA and CIFA and um, with this TDM component, even internal in the organization, mobilize our district champions, really that they get them to be exposed. Because of course, you would know the structure of the department, how we are organized. We are a national department and um, how government or IGR components are structured currently. Uh, we then have the provincial departments, which are governments by themselves from the provincial point of view. However, through an ITR interface, that's where we ought really to be finding each other, how we extend down there. But through our CEDA channel, you would know that uh, on all the districts in essence, at least we've got that presence. And then uh, further, therefore, through information um, offices and so on, we are looking forward to that even at a municipal level, we get there. You will also be aware that the ministry or the department has also advanced what is called the district coordinators, which would be based some in municipalities where there's no capacity to host, CEDA will be hosting. Those will also be those full soldiers that therefore will be able to, 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 to go out there. So yes, in that, um, plan of ours that we have uh, put to go there. We might not really be reaching everywhere, but uh, through collaboration, as I said, any input that you can um, share with us uh, will always uh, be, 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 be appreciated, uh, 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 my leader. So Chairperson, um, as you said, our putting some acceleration um, with DGRV, towards uh, speeding up the process of engagement further on the articulations that are there in terms of uh, actions. I mean, that local government component, um, in fact, this very thank you to your good service as well with uh, asking for this presentation because it also really make one further interface to see my, no, 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 no. It's not just well about this training, which at least is the low hanging fruit, but there are bigger scope opportunities. I mean, the capacity, our LEDs in the country, as I've said, being a TDM uh, district champion, we found one thing. You go uh, LED manager of uh, the district, you find, you ask when have met, what are your periodic, let's call it meetings with your um, uh, LEDs in local governments? No, there's not even a single meeting that they, hold together, interface, feed, and have a district plan, and so on. It's quite, quite challenging where we based, we based some of, let's call it, I'll call it some assumptions on our national plans based on the, ah, with municipalities, with LEDs. So this relationship here around the capacity development of municipal officials for me, and even officials of the department, officials of our agencies, in terms of train the trainer, they really give us an opportunity really to build capacity. Hence, really this uh, trip or exposure uh, to German also, uh, let me say both from the political side, from your good selves and the department officials so that that retention of uh, let's call it um, uh, institutional memory or exposure memory for continuity internally will be highly appreciated. So yes, we look forward to engage further with each other. Let me thank you, Chair, and pause here for now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kabi. Uh, Honorable Kruger, are you fine?
If there are no any yes, thank you, ma'am. Sorry, um, oh, I was please. also speaking to myself. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm covered, and um, I would like also to have um, during our um, uh, uh, recess period now, constituency period, um, I would like to have a one-to-one -one discussion um, about um, the program, especially in the rural areas, because, you know, you are from Pumalanga, you know there's a huge need. So um, I would like to have a one-to-one -one, uh, meeting so that we can discuss a strategy, how we can... Um, uh, 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 you know, contact and, and, and be of service to the rural um, community of our province and of South Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Kruger. Uh, in the absence of any other hands, let me take this opportunity and thank the department for your good efforts. I believe this is, a, is promising because our intention indeed to see cooperative surviving. Benchmarking will assist us a lot. So we are wishing you good luck, speed up the process uh, so that we, we may come to the conclusion and move with speed with the implementation part of it. Uh, we are happy. And then we can now move to the next uh, item. Yeah. Chairperson, as I exit, is it are we allowed to ask you a question? <laughs> yes, you are. Which relates to your uh, closing remarks, Chair, around mm. the benchmarking. I wanted to find out um, indeed whether there is a, a, should I say, a benchmarking tour planned or to come, uh, by when, and so on. Because uh, from the department side, unless somewhere this info is there, it's just on email, like towards the development of this presentation that um, uh, portfolio members towards a benchmarking, something like that. When When is this, or it's just any info, really, to be honest, I, I do not have, as I coordinate if, for all. If, if small... If Chisbu is on the platform, our content advice can brief you in, in one minute. Uh, Smoo, can you do that, please? Chair, uh, morning, Chair. Morning, honorable members, colleagues. Uh, Mr. Nkabinde, I'm not sure if I understood your question. Uh, you said something about the benchmarking exercise. Okay, and uh, uh, voting pin uh, Thank you. Uh, um, yes, I was saying I was uh, uh, starting my question based on the closing remarks of the chair uh, as she related to the benchmarking exercise. And then I asked whether I can ask a question around that, that is towards the development of this presentation that I made one got to be exposed about, um, should I say, it might be misplaced, hence really the question that there is an intended, um, let's call it a study tour by the members to oh, chairman. Yes. So I wanted yes. to, so we don't have that information, uh, whether is there something like that indeed, and if yes, by when is it, and uh, what is the almost uh, 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 an interface between us as a department and that process because it's very crucial. I take as per our recommendation also here about being exposed to the German cooperatives development model. Uh, yeah, so that was my question. Okay, no, it, it's fine. I think Chairperson, the person who's better place to respond because it, it relates to the logistics. Yes, there is a study tour being planned to visit uh, Germany uh, by members of the portfolio committee. Um, it, it is now a, a standard agenda item in, in our program. After your presentation, for instance, King was going to speak to it to update members of the portfolio committee 
as to how far in terms of the logistics, um, uh, what else needs to be done going forward. So there is that study. Uh, Uking will speak to it shortly. Um, I, I hope you'll still be in the platform. Or King, maybe you want to speak to it now. I don't know. Uh, can I hear from the chairperson? Uh, okay. Through you, chairperson, um, in responding, there is a study tour planned for the portfolio committee. And then um, while we were doing the preparation, we the procedure was we are being helped by a uh, Department of International Relationship, which is DECO. So late in, in uh, April, end of April, we learned that uh, DECO is no longer assisting in uh, facilitating the study tours for any other government institutions. So luckily, because as the portfolio committee, we knew that there was a uh, memorandum of understanding between TGRV and the department. So as the secretary, then we, we approached uh, TGRV to assist us in uh, developing the program and also in uh, uh, facilitating the places that the portfolio committee would like to visit based on the concept document that has been, that was developed. So, so far that's the thing. And so far is that uh, we are still awaiting for a political application. The procedures of parliament, we've got two types of applications. That is the, the political application and the fire funding application. So we are still waiting for the approval of the political application of which I was going to talk to it towards the close of the meeting, that the application as for yesterday, we learned that it is in the, it, so it will be in the office of the speaker and the speaker was going to be available today. So maybe you might know by the end of the day, but we'll still be doing the follow-up on that, whether it has been approved or not approved. And then the dates that were identified were between the 18th and the 24th of, of June, which is the first week of the constituency period uh, uh, in parliament. So that's where we are. And then uh, the chairperson had indicated when we started this that uh, we'll, uh, we might invite the department for those relevant officials who are the, with what the objective of the study tour is to accompany the committee. So now we haven't yet sent that, uh, that uh, communique because we were waiting for the approval. We couldn't just invite uh, the department only to find out maybe we are not approved to go. So that's the state of affairs. I think uh, from the minister, the she does have the idea that the portfolio committee it's uh, it's having those plans. So I think I can pause there. So as soon as we get an indication that the approval has been granted, then we'll then uh, inform the department to accompany the the, the committee. But uh, in terms of funding. The funding the department has to fund itself as a parliament only fund the uh, political uh, politicians uh, within the, the parliament institution. So that's what I can say for now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Rakin. I think your explanation is clear. We will communicate with the department in due course. Then can we move to our agenda? No, thank you, Chair. Uh, I can exit most of the meeting. I will engage with Ntate uh, Gunene then, because 
even for hours, the timing chair, sorry to just shut in, um, uh, when the, 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 depart, the secretariat sends to us and then maybe the trip is next week, you, you see what I mean? So just for the alert part of it, as uh, he says, maybe it's already I'll engage with Mr. So that any, like the concept document itself, I'm not sure, maybe it's with the ministry, so I'll follow up with Mr. Egnene so that we get also uh, to be in context and context. Thank you so much, Chair. It does make sense. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Gami. Thank you. Chairperson, it's a... Uh... The next item is the consideration of a of a set of team, minutes. Team minutes. How many are they? There are only two. Is this one okay. of the is this one of the 24th of May and the one of the 31st of May? Okay. Scroll them. Any the, correction in page one? So now of the 30 of the 24th of, of May, chair. Okay. Any correction, honorable members? Just move if there is no correction. Under page three. Page four. Any correction? Thank you. Can I have a move on for the adoption of the minutes? Is a true reflection yes. of what? Yes. yes. Thank Morning. you. Yes. Yes. In the resolution 7.3. Mm. Yes. Where it says the secretary must draft a correspondence for the attention of minister to request clarification with regards to the resignation of chairperson of the board and status of the appointment of the member, not member. Okay, thank you for that correction. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Yes, I may Chair. have been honorable members. This shows that indeed you are serious about your work. So with that, can you make a rider of moving for the adoption of that correction? With those corrections, shall I move for the adoption? Thank you. Any seconder, honorable members? Any seconder, uh, honorable, honorable Mieni, I do second, uh, Chairperson. Thank you, honorable Mieni. Can you go to the next set on bracking? The minutes are adopted. Scroll the minutes of the 31st of May, 2023, page one, any corrections? Page two. Page three. Page four. 
Page five. Can I have a move for the adoption of the minutes as a true reflection of what transpired on the 31st of May, 2023? Honorable members, can we approve the minutes, our own minutes? Chairperson. Yes, Honorable Bridget. I do move for the adoption of the minutes as a true reflection of what transpired on that day. Thank you, Honorable Member. Any second, Honorable? Yes, I will second. Member. Thank you. I Thank you, second. Honorable Kruger. Minutes, minutes adopted. Thank you, Honorable Kruger. Can you go back to the agenda, King? That was the last item, if I remember very, very well. Yes, Chairperson. Uh, in fact, it was going to be an announcement, but I, I think I've already made it with the yeah. of, uh, for with the trip to okay. Germany. Yeah, yeah we'll, Ma'am Chair, can I? Sorry, yes, Chair, um, can I just ask a question about the trip? Um, the last time um, it was mentioned that um, you, as a, chip, a person, will. Go and see the chairperson of of the NA about more members going to Germany. Is there any um, movement in this regard? We are still waiting for the speaker. We have made that request. Not more members who are adding two and one official. So we are still waiting for the approval by the speaker. We have presented both uh, applications, waiting for the waiting for the approval of the one according to the memo, their decision, but also have applied for the second one according to our, our request that our humble our request is to have other two additional. So we'll inform the members in due course. Chairperson, well, well, just a, another question while I'm on the floor. Um, I see... Um, um, Brother King got a nice little beady on his head. So can we make it um, official um, colors for this uh, committee so that we all get our ears a little bit warmer? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, honorable Chair. Yeah, do you? Yes. Uh, honorable Chair, it's Honorable Hendricks, yeah. I'm just worried okay, about uh, about if the trip is approved, whether there will be enough time to get their visas. I'm sure members have passports, but uh, we. I'm just worried that one week to get the visa is going to be a problem unless Braking has a special arrangement. Yeah, you are right. That's why we are knocking in the doors each and every day, but. Uh, you know, last born, we rules of the house do not allow us to we are following that protocol, but we'll see on how to finish it. Uh, if they agree with us, then we'll stick to the days. If they delay us, we'll come out with some other strategies, as Braking has indicated while he was briefing the officials from the department. But thanks for your concern. Can you call it a day? Thanks for the deliberation and everything. The meeting stand again. Thank you, Che. Thank you, comrade. Thanks, Che. Recording stopped. Thanks, Jay. Hey, Ms. Tromelang, how are you? Honorable Tromelang. 